Ken Murray and his sponsor, Anheuser Busch, makers of Budweiser, are glad to relinquish their time tonight so that we may bring you this special telecast of the Jack Benny Show. Ken Murray will be back again, as usual, next week at this same time. For the first time on television, the Jack Benny Show, brought to you by the makers of Lucky Strike. We Snooky Lancer. You made your plans for Halloween yet? Well, so have we, and we're on a ghost-to-ghost hookup right now. I'll ring your doorbell Tuesday night, don't hide behind the screen. I'll bring you packs of Lucky for a happy Halloween. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike me happy. Other smokes could light me up so gaily. These luckies are so rich and mild, I smoke a carton daily. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike me happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Yes, sir, there's just no doubt about it, neighbor. At Halloween or at any other time, when you've got luckies on hand, you're bound to have a happy time of it. Why? Because you just can't beat that wonderful combination of perfect mildness and rich, true tobacco taste. Now, you take that mildness part a lucky gives you. Well, a lucky gives you perfect mildness every time. That's what I said. And that's what those scientific tests say, too. And remember, they proved luckies are milder than any other principal brand. And as for that rich taste of Lucky Strike, why, well, shucks, you can find out all about that just by lighting a Lucky Strike. Say. How about that? Join me in a lucky right now. Learn what a difference truly fine tobacco makes in your own deep down smoking enjoyment. Because only fine tobacco can always give you both perfect mildness and rich taste. And partner, LSMFT. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. So why don't you be happy? Go lucky. Try a carton today. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike me happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike me happy. 65th Street and Broadway, let them off, let them off, please. Don't block the aisle, let them off. Watch it. for his autograph and he charged me eight cents.
I'd give a million dollars to know how I look. <laughs> well, it's too late now. But ladies and gentlemen, I must tell you before we start the show how I happened to get in, in television at this time. You see, all last year it got to be a little bit embarrassing because, uh, you know, a lot of my fans would write to me and my friends would ask me, they want to know why I wasn't in television. They want to know if I was afraid of it. You know, if I was nervous about it. I mean, it was ridiculous, really. I, no, I wasn't nervous or afraid. It was my sponsor who didn't have the nerve. <laughs> but, of course, now that we're in it, he's, he's really going to plunge. This time, I'm going to be on television once every eight weeks. <laughs> every eight weeks, I'm going to do a television show, so uh, don't expect to see my program advertised on your uh, television page in the newspaper. You'll probably find it on your calendar under full moon. <laughs> But I love to, you know, the, I tell you, I love it. I just got in it. I don't know. But the thing that I, I like of, about this medium, it, it's going to bring me into New York at least four times a year. And that's the one thing I, I, I I'm not saying it. Mm. No, really, I, I, I'm not saying this because you're sitting here, you know, but I love New York. I, I don't know. There's, uh, you've got to get away from California once in a while. You see, I love it there too. But here, there's so much excitement in New York. I don't know. I, gosh, I've only been here 10 days, you know, and 30 bucks went like that. You know? <laughs> Next time I'm coming alone. <laughs> of course, I know what you're laughing at. You know, you probably listen to my radio program and you think that I'm stingy and miserly. And of course, that is a character ladies and gentlemen, that I assume... <laughs> no, really, purely for your entertainment, because I'm not stingy or anything like that. Although I must say that while in New York, I do have to be a little bit careful about expenses. You see, as a matter of fact, right now I'm sort of roughing it here. I'm living in a modest place. I have a room overlooking the beautiful Sherry Netherlands Hotel. <laughs> I thought it was better than paying the Sherry Netherlands prices and overlook the dump that I'm living in. <laughs> but I mustn't stay out here too long. I have to uh, sort of be the MC for this. Um, I really don't need these glasses. <laughs> I, I just use them for seeing. <laughs> Holy smokes, there's an audience here. <laughs> but I, um, of course, you know, most comedians, I know that I meant to say this before, are always nervous. I've watched their first shows, you know, and most of them are nervous, but I'm, I'm not at all. I, I, I feel this way, this way I am. I mean, if, I mean, this is my character, you see what I mean? <laughs> if I'm a success tonight, all right, you know? <laughs> if not, I'll kill myself. <laughs> The reason that I, um, Mary, how do I look? Now, the reason, <laughs> the reason I have this card here is because during rehearsal, you see, we've changed the show around so many times that I, I keep forgetting what comes on next, see? So, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to introduce next the, uh, a fellow hey, who has been with me Joe. for about, pardon me a moment, <laughs> Joe, move light number five a little to the left. <laughs> He's getting too much shadow on his face. And another thing, don't shoot from that side camera. But he can't take a profile. It makes him look lousy. <laughs> look, look. Oh, pardon. <laughs> Everything else is okay. Look, mister. Hi, it's okay. <laughs> hey, when you come to New York. Look, what are you doing? I'm saying hello to my aunt in California. Look, this is a live show. You see, we only go as far as St. Louis or Kansas City. Doesn't go. It, this probably won't reach California for about two weeks. 
Oh, I was talking to a critic during rehearsal, and he said if the wind is right, they may get it tonight. <laughs> You know, if he trimmed his mustache a little, he'd look like Mary's sister, Babe. <laughs> well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I started to present, I know you'll be very, very happy to meet, my radio announcer. Now, I've been in radio 19 years, and he's been with me 17 of those 19 years, Don Wilson. I was just telling all the folks out there that you have been with me 17 of my 19 years in radio. Well, thanks, Jack. And I must say those 17 years have been very happy ones. Well, thank you, Don. <laughs> Not fruitful, but happy. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Jack, I'd like to add that I hope I'll be with you for 17 years in television. Well, Don, we can't be sure of that. I hope so, too, of 17 years. So let's at least make the most of this hour now. <laughs> Of course, I'm not nervous, Don, as I was telling him before about television, because of my experiences in the movies. You see, as a matter of fact, right now I have a 10-year contract with Warner Brothers, and there's a clause in it that uh, permits me to do television shows. Oh, really? Yes. That was good, the way you said that. <laughs> Two words and what he made out of it. <laughs> you know, yes, Don, this is right under, this is right under the clause that prevents me from making pictures. <laughs> See, I didn't realize when the horn blew at midnight that it was blowing taps. <laughs> but look at Don, would you, uh, would you like to... Uh, anyway, well, Jack, well, getting, getting back to television for just a moment... I'm glad you got me out of that spot. I think, uh, <laughs> I think well, we're going to find the things we did in radio won't always fit here. What do you mean, Don? Well, now, for instance, uh, on radio, you always talked about how fat I am. Hmm? And you got laughs talking about how many chins I have. Uh -huh. Now everybody can see I only have one. Yeah. Well, I... Um... <laughs> I thought the makeup man did a marvelous job cementing them together. <laughs> but look at Don, would you like to introduce the members of the, of the show, the cast? Oh, yes, indeed I would, Jack, but right now it's time for a commercial. Already? Mm -hmm. well, well, then I'll leave you alone. Oh, no, 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 Jack, stay right here. I want you to help me with this. With the commercial? Yes. Do you uh, have a package of Lucky Strike with you? Well, I, I generally have. I, so I, I should have a package. Here's some... Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They're always ready. Always. Now, <laughs> uh, what, 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 what should I do now? What do well, I do? Well, Jack, that? I'll explain it to you. Come here just a minute. Yeah. Oh, I'm just hoping. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, well, go ahead. Huh? Yes, okay. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy your cigarette. Enjoy truly fine tobacco that combines both real mildness and rich taste in one grand cigarette, Lucky Strike. Or only fine tobacco gives you both real mildness and rich taste. So, friends, be happy. Go lucky. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. For real deep-down smoking enjoyment that comes from truly fine tobacco, Can I change it's Lucky this Strike. Hand? Yes, go right ahead, Jack. Change is perfectly all right. Okay. Now, scientific tests prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand. And why? L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Thank you. <laughs> well, Don, that was just what? That's the get it, just the thing. You can even have it. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, Don. Thank you. That was really great. <laughs> and now that you got your little message over, now would you like to introduce some of the other uh, stars? Like Hello. Dinah, Dinah Shore. Would you like to introduce oh, Dinah Shore? Indeed I would, Jack. But I thought you told me you were going to have Olsen and Johnson as guests. Well, we were going to have Olsen and Johnson, but they had some silly comedy idea of blowing up the theater. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid of it, you see. 
So uh, uh, we're having dinosaur instead. Well, this just happened a couple of days ago then, didn't it? Oh, no, 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 Don. You see, this was about, uh, oh, about three weeks ago. You see, I was home in Beverly Hills, you know, and I realized the time was getting short, and I ought to do something about getting a television show together. Mr. Benny's car for tonight. Well, Susie, I wouldn't use the car tonight. You see, Mr. Benny drove it down to CBS this afternoon. What's that got to do with it? Well, we have a rule in this house. If we take the car any place and it brings us back the same day, we don't press our luck any further. Oh, well, all right, then. I'll meet you at 8 o'clock anyway. Okay. So, oh, oh, say, Susie. Yes? Be sure to wear that same blue satin dress you wore the first night I met you. But Rochester... That dress is so tight. Yeah. <laughs> so long, Susie. I'll see you tonight. Goodbye. Well, I better hurry and get my work done. The boy 
boss ought to be here pretty soon. be so helpful. Oh, that's and I appreciate it too. You see, this, this medium is entirely different. I mean, that's the way they explained it to me. You see, in television, you're not supposed to be conscious of a studio audience. You know, you're, you're supposed to look like you're, you're not entertaining anybody. Boss, I saw your last rehearsal. You've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, right there. But one show under my belt and everything will be all right. I'll have a lot to do after that. Oh, hello, Polly. Daddy didn't mean to neglect you. How do things go today? Count the fruit. Count the fruit. <laughs> what? Count the fruit. <laughs> Rochester. <laughs> Rochester, did, did you eat a, a banana? Rochester, answer me. Did you eat a banana? Uh... Yes, boss, and uh, I might as well tell you I ate an apple, too. An apple when? Last July. <laughs> Last July? Well, why tell me about it now? What's the difference? You'll find out about it in January when you take inventory. <laughs> Rochester, I don't mind you taking fruit. I just want you to mark it down in a book so I'll know where I stand. <laughs> That's all. Ah, oh, Polly, you're going to be proud of Daddy pretty soon. Daddy's going to go on television, you know. Oh, isn't that cute? She laid an egg. Gee, I hope it ain't catching. <laughs> Say, boss, would you like to have me fix you something to eat? No, just a sandwich is all right, Chester. Oh, I'm not very, very hungry. I'll get the door. Come in! Well, hello, Mr. Kitsa. Hello, Mr. Well, come in, come in. Thank you very much. Say, this is, this is really a surprise. I mean, what are you doing in this neighborhood? Well, I heard you're going to New York on television, so I just came by to wish you a very happy video. Oh, well, thank you very, very much. Sit down. Thank you very Sit down. much. Oh my, oh my, how I envy you going to New York. What a city, what a city. You, you come from there, don't you, Mr. Kitzel? Not exactly. You see, I was born in a suburb of New York. A suburb of New York? Which one? Ellis Island. <laughs> well, look, uh, you couldn't have been born in Ellis Island. I thought that's where your immigrants just passed through. Oh, in those days, they held you up a long time. Oh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, well, look what we got. <laughs> That's all right, Polly. It's the first time I ever saw a burglar alarm with feathers. <laughs> she didn't mean anything, really. Help yourself. No, thank you. I don't want to make the Polly nervous. <laughs> well, you, you really like New York, eh, Mr. Kitzel? Ho, ho, ho. What I wouldn't give to be back in New York to walk once again down Broadway. To see those theaters and those crowds and that big electric sign in front of the Times building. 
Oh, oh, you mean the sign that has all the news on it, you know, that goes yeah, by in light? Yeah. That's the one. What an invention. What other corner of the world could you get hit by a car and read about it while you're laying there waiting for the ambulance? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's the only place it could happen, right? Yeah. Uh, what, what are you looking for, Mr. Kitzel? A cigarette. Oh. Oh, here. Oh, is that empty again? <laughs> Just recently empty. Yes, yes. <laughs> Mr. Benny, you uh, got a cigarette? A cigarette? Yes. Why, certainly, Mr. Kisso. Of course, right over here. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> you mean from the machine? Yes. Maybe in Beverly Hills it's fashionable. <laughs> well, Mr. Beanie, I guess I got to be running along now. But well, before I go, I want to wish you again good luck on television. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Kiss. It was awfully nice of you to drop in. Nice to be here. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Come again. Benny. See me again. He's such a nice guy, that Kitzel, isn't he? Yeah. Better hit your sandwich. Uh, leave it right over there, Rochester. I gotta figure out what I'm going to do on my show. On the first show, I haven't got it figured out yet. Now, first, I know first, I've got to have an over. Oh, Miss Higgins, uh, use the Bendix on the end. The others are reserved. Right? <laughs> On my first show, I'm going to have to have, um, well, I'll have the overture, and then I'll, um, Rochester, you've been putting a little too much bluing in my murine lately. <laughs> and then I'll have the quartet, and I'll have them sing something about show business, maybe the quartet, a number about show business, and then, see, my teeth are beautiful. <laughs> and, oh! I knew I forgot something. Hey, Rochester, Mr. Paley wanted me to get a guest star, and I promised him that I'd try and get Dinah Shore. Let's see, I know I got her number here somewhere. See, Dinah Shore. Crestio, 71116. Quiet, Polly. See, Dinah Shore. Crestio, 71116. Polly, quiet. See, oh, here it is, Dinah Shore. Crestio, 71115. Yeah. Please press you. Seven, one, 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 five. What number did you dial, please? Oh, Crestview 71115. That number has been changed to Crestview 71116. Okay, uh, ring that number, will you, uh, operator? Thank you. to Dinah Shore, please. This is Miss Shore speaking. Oh, oh, hello, Dinah. Hello, who's this? Guess. Well, I haven't the faintest idea. Well, try. Well, look, I don't know who you are, and I'm all... Now, look, look, I'll give you a hint. Uh -huh. About six years ago, you were making pictures at MGM, weren't you? That's right. Well, now, who had the dressing room next to yours? Oh, hello, Ava! <laughs> No, no, look, Dinah. Uh, Ava Gardner had the dressing room on one side of you. Now, who had the one on the other side? That was the washroom. Only <laughs> part of it. <laughs> look, Dinah, uh, this is Jack Benny. Oh, Jack, hello. I haven't talked to you in a long time. Oh, it's been almost a year now. That's right. Now, look, Dinah, here's why I called. Well, look, Jack, if it's about my Christmas cards, I've already... No, 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 I, no, I was going to call you about my Christmas cards. <laughs> now, Dinah, the reason I called is because on October 28th, on Saturday, I'm going to do my first television show, and I'd love to have you as my guest. 
Well, Jack, I'm very flattered. How'd you happen to think of me? Well, I, uh, I saw you on Bob Hope's program about six weeks ago. I thought you were just wonderful. Thank you. And, of course, Dinah, uh -huh. between you and me, I would have never let you do that last number, you know. That, the one oh, the, which one was that, Jack? The one where you were dressed in, in those tight slacks and you kept walking up and down the stage, swinging your hips. That was Bob. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I couldn't get near the screen, you know. The, the, it was so crowded in front of the store. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, Dinah, how much money would you want to be a, a guest on my, on my program? Oh, Jack, I don't think we ought to talk about money. Now the important thing is to do a good show. What would you want me to sing? Well, I don't know. I imagine you'd be the best judge of that, you know? Well, those old standards are always good. Something like, uh, well, like, uh, let me sing a little bit of one for you and see how you like it, all right? Yeah. All right. Ask the sky above and ask the earth below. Why I'm so in love and why I love you so. You remember this one, Jack? Yeah, yeah. Couldn't tell you why I tried it. Just why I didn't find you. Can you hear me? Nah, oh, fine, Dad. When you went away, you left a glowing spot. Well, now, getting back to business, now, uh -huh. how much money would you want to be a guest? Huh? Oh, Jack, I don't know how much money to ask for. I'm not much of a business. Well, well, anything. Just name a price. I mean, I won't take advantage of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Jack, I think you ought to pay me what I got on my last television show. How much was that? $5,000. Well, I think... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rochester. You're welcome. Uh, Look, how much money did you ask for? Five thousand dollars. <laughs> uh, Dinah. Uh huh. What happened, Jack? Uh, Look, I, I'm all right. I'm all, I'm all right now, Dinah. But look at. Uh -huh. uh, let's let's do this in a business-like way. I think five thousand is too much. Now I could go as high. Your time is up. Deposit five cents for another three minutes, please. Oh, Dinah. You called me, Jack. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now look, Dinah. Won't you reconsider that? Uh, uh, I think it's just a little bit too much. Oh, Jack, what have you got against $5,000? Nothing. That's why I'd like to keep it. <laughs> uh, look at Dinah. Look, Jack, what? we shouldn't be talking business. That's what we have agents for. Well... You see, my agent's name is Task Driver. Why don't you have your agent call my agent? 
Well, all right. That's the way you want it, Dinah. That's the way it'll be. You know? I think it's better that way, Dad. Okay. And thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye. Goodbye. Oh, oh Dinah. Yes, Listen, Dad. when we do our show, wear that green taffeta dress. The you blue know, one. The blue one. <laughs> Polly, look, wear that green taffeta dress. The You're... blue one. The blue one. <laughs> All right, wear that blue dress. Oh, Jack, that blue dress is so tight. <laughs> All right, Dinah, wear anything. I'll see you there, huh? Goodbye. Well, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, as I try to explain to Don Wilson, that's the way we had Dinah Shore. Now, before I bring around, though, I think it's no more than right that I thank the Anheuser-Busch people for, uh... How do I look now? <laughs> uh, anything for a laugh, even if you look lousy. But uh, I want to thank the Anheuser-Busch people for giving me these 45 minutes. And I also would like to thank my very, very dear friend, that very fine comedian, who's the star of that show, Mr. Ken Murray, personally. And he's right here, and I'd just like to have him say hello. And, well, I see you're smoking a cigarette, huh? Yeah, I got your letter. Oh. <laughs> Ken? I want to thank you very, very much for being on my show. I really do. Well, that's nothing, Jack. Jack, I would do anything in the world for you. I'd give you my shirt. Really? Yeah. You do the best laundry in town, don't you? <laughs> Are you one of my customers? I certainly am. Just take a look at that NSM. Oh, yes. No starch uh, Murray. That's, that's right. That's right. right. Clean but limpy. <laughs> Jack, uh, listen, let me say one word, will you? You're, you're a little behind. The fellow just came back and said, oh, yes, rush it up. I but know, that's all right. I want to tell you, I dropped by to wish you all the luck in the world to one of the very nicest fellas in our business. Thank you. you. Thank and you. good luck to you. Thank you very much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we really do have to. It's a shame you never know how to time these first shows. I'd like to bring you my guest star now, the most popular singer of popular songs in America, Miss Dinah Shaw. For five thousand dollars, you could have walked faster. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, Diana, I'm very happy you're on the show. Now, tell me, what are you going to sing for your first number? I thought I'd sing Tessa's Torch Song. Oh, that's wonderful. But look at uh, Diana. Do you think it would help your number if I accompanied you on the violin? Uh, uh, well, Jack, that's very sweet of you, but I don't want you to go to all that. Oh, violin. no bother. I have the violin with me, right in my dressing room. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Jack. Uh, you see, I've already rehearsed it with the orchestra, and I think any added instrument might make me a little nervous. Well, it was just a suggestion, you know. <laughs> you know, maybe some other time, huh? Yes. Well, thanks, just the same, you know. Good luck. Thank you. <laughs> I had a man. Was a good man That is you see What I mean is I thought he was a good man I had a friend She was a good friend I told my friend about my man Cause I thought she was a good
first one. No, really, Dinah, that was, that was awfully good. You know, Dinah, what I was thinking, though, before, uh -huh. it seems that I, I don't know, all week we've been here rehearsing, uh -huh. you know, and, uh, I don't know, I never got to see you at all this week. You'd oh. come in the theater alone, and you'd leave alone, and uh -huh. <laughs> I was just wondering that if tonight, now that the excitement of the first show is over, uh -huh. I was wondering if you mind maybe if we went out together and I'd take you home afterwards, you know? Oh, Jack, I can't see any harm in that. Oh, I wish you could. <laughs> oh, Jack, you're cute. L.S. I'm at Oh, oh I, I got so many. I'm just nervous, Miss, you know? Huh? That, that's all up. I'm it's a shame we have to rush like But I'm... look at Dinah. What, um, why, why, why don't you go out with me tonight? What well, you... uh, Jack, you know, I like to know a little more about somebody when I go out with them. I haven't known you awfully long. Well, what do you mean? Just a few things a girl ought to find out. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, I now, uh, for instance, do you take your tea with cream? And in your favorite dream, is there a house with a view? And would your heart go boom, boom, boom if I should walk into the room? I ought to know more about you. If we really have a date and we can stay out late, just tell me what will you do? Can we drive a... a I ought to know more about you. Are you really 39, or are you 49, or are you 72? And I would like to know so much if we go out to we go Dutch, I ought to know more about you. Well, we're asking questions now. I'd like to know somehow just what we're both going to do. Can I have a real good time and be back home at half past nine? I ought to know more. You I ought to know, know more. more. You I ought to know more. more. I know. I know. Just take a rent you like. Do you so plucky strike like all the smart people do? And do you love to pop and pop? Because you know they're never up. We ought to know more about you. Lucky's like you all, I'm on for Arkansas, remember my sponsor too. And while you're watching you'll agree, it's always LSMFT, we ought to know more about you. After all is said and done, it's lucky two to one. I know, but that's nothing new. Hey, don't you think that's really sad? So round, so firm, so fully packed. For a minute, I thought they were talking about me. I ought to know more. We ought to know more. We got to know more about you. Ladies and gentlemen, our time is nearly up, and I don't believe you'd want to leave without hearing my theme song, Love in Blue. Thank you, if you please. Enjoy truly fine tobacco that always combines both perfect mildness and rich taste in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. So remember, make your next carton, Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.